this video is just going to be a walkthrough of what happens to the current in this circuit here as it flows through and what this inductor does to it, what this happens to this resistor. We're going to work out volt drops across the inductor, volt drops across the resistor. We're going to work out the energy stored in this inductor. I'm assuming that you understand how the circuit works. This is more of a walkthrough of how the math works. Now, just as a quick little refresher, when we have this circuit, let's just quickly draw this in here. This will be my current. This will be my time. The moment I close this switch right here, current starts at zero, and then it starts to climb. So we start here, and it starts to climb until it reaches a steady state. Now it takes five time constants to get there. One, two, three, four, five, until it reaches steady state. So we're going to walk through that assuming you know this. So let's take a look at uh, throwing some values at this. Now here I've got some values. I've given the battery 200 volts. I've given the inductor 300 millihenries. And I've given the resistor 15 ohms. And you might notice now I've closed this switch. So we're going to walk through the math of all this. We're going to see what happens to the current as it rises up through this whole circuit. We're going to see a volt drops across this guy and a volt drop across this guy. And we'll talk about the energy stored. So here we are. I've just kind of shrunk it down a bit. These are the things that we're going to be working out. We're going to work out ISS, which is current at the steady state. That's right here. Then we're going to work out this is current at the first time constant or first tau. Then we're going to also work out the voltage at the first tau of the resistor. That's this voltage here at the first tau. Then we're also going to talk about the voltage at the inductor, because there's going to be a volt drop there as well. And then at the end of it, we're going to talk about the W, which is the energy stored in this guy after current is up and running. Now let's quickly look at a refresher of the formulas that we need to know for this. So here are the formulas we're looking at. Let's start out with our tau. That's our time constant. Remember I talked about how it takes five time constants to reach our steady state current. So what we do is we work this out by taking this guy, tau is equal to the, your inductor, or your inductance, sorry, divided by your resistance. And that gives you one tau. And we have to remember that it takes five. Let me just redo that. That's a terrible five. Five tau to steady state. So that's, we got to remember that whatever number that we p work out here, we have to multiply that by 5 to get to our steady state current. Our next formula, let's just get rid of this guy here, is your current at the tau. So this is your I at tau. So if I wanted to work out what my current was at any particular time constant, I use this formula, which is in another video I showed you how to do this. 1 minus e to the negative x times your steady state current will give you your current at that tau. And remember, this is that Napier's constant, that negative x, that's your time constant. So if you're working it out at the first time constant, it's negative 1. Second time constant, negative 2. Third time constant, negative 3. Fourth time constant, negative 4. Fifth time constant, negative 5. Sixth time constant, just kidding, there's no sixth time constant. So, and this 1 here, that stays the same no matter what. I don't care what time constant you're in, it's always 1 there. Then, just to talk about the voltage at the resistor at a certain time constant, we just take this current that we worked out at that time constant, using Ohm's law, we multiply that by the R, and we get the voltage at the resistor. Then, as a quick aside here, the voltage at the inductor, V of L, at that tau, we can't use current across the inductor. That doesn't give us the voltage. So what we have to do is work out what the voltage of the resistor is. Then we multiply. The, sorry, not multiply it. We subtract it from the source voltage, and that is the voltage at the inductor, because Kirchhoff's law has to apply. And then we have this, the W, or the W, as a German boss of mine would, used to call it. And that is just 0.5 times the inductance times the steady state current squared. Those are the formulas that we're going to be using in the next little bit. So let's take a look at the problem and get cracking on it. When working these problems out, the first thing we've got to figure out is our ISS, our steady state current. Remember that inductance is the property of an electrical circuit that opposes any change in current. So everything is based off of that ISS. So let's work that out right now. I've got 200 volts right here. I've got 15 ohms. That ends up equaling 13.33 amps. Let's write that in here, 13.3 amps. So that's going to be our steady state current. That's what we're starting out with. Now what we're going to do 
is we're going to work out what our current is at the first tau. So that's this guy right here. Now, in order to do that, we are going to be using the formula again. 1 minus e to the negative 1 times ISS. So I'm going to plug that into my calculator, and I'm going to get that current. And that current works out to be 8.4 amps. 8 point four amps and that's that current at the first tau now to walk this through and this should make more sense now if I've got 8.4 amps right flowing through the circuit I, that means I've got 8.4 amps going across this 15 ohm resistor so in order to get this resistance I just go 8.4 amps times 15 ohms and that will give me my voltage at the first tau that works out to be 126 volts 126 volts so we're on our way we have now figured out what the current is at the first tau we figured out what the voltage of the resistor is at the first tau now we need to figure out what the voltage at the inductor is at the first tau in order to do that we know that we have 200 volts let's just kind of call attention to that so I got 200 volts right there and at this point, I have 126 volts across this guy. So in order to get this using Kirchhoff's law, 200 minus 126 volts gives me 74 volts. So I've got 74 volts across my inductor. So is that, that, it doesn't matter which we're using. If you're using, say I wanted to figure out what the voltage was at the second tau, I'd work out what my current is going through here at the second tau. Then I would multiply that current times this resistance to figure out what the resistive voltage is at the second tau. Then I would take my source voltage minus that voltage to get this voltage. It's usually the trickiest part of these things, but it doesn't have to be that hard, as you can see. The last thing here is we've got to figure out how much energy is being stored in those magnetic lines of flux that surround this inductor. In order to do that, we just take that formula, W is equal to 0.5 Li squared. W is equal to 0.5 Li squared. We do that, and we punch those numbers in, and we get 26.5 joules. Let's get that written up there. 26.5 joules of energy stored in the magnetic lines of flux surrounding this inductor. And that is a complete walkthrough. I used it at the first tau. You could use it at the second, third, fourth, fifth tau. It doesn't matter as long as you're using this formula, this e to the negative x. So let me just uh, write that up here because that's I've got it written down for the first tau. But it's 1 minus e to the negative, negative x times ISS. That formula there unlocks everything. Now, just as a side, I, for some reason, I got a couple dots there. That's supposed to be a minus x. This x, again, is your time constant. First time constant, negative 1. Second time constant, negative 2, and so on and so on. That's it. That's the walkthrough.